Okay, so let's figure out what 0.7% of 60 is. That's obviously the topic of this video, but basically the topic is uh, basic percent. Okay, how do you handle a basic percent problem? Well, we're going to go ahead and review that in this video. Now, uh, this is a basic percent problem. There's other type of percent problems that are a little bit more interesting. Uh, we're not going to... Um, review those particular problems, but I've done quite a bit of videos on percent. You can check those videos out in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist if you want to continue to learn about percent, which you definitely want to. Okay, this is a very common uh, mathematical concept that we face, you know, on our daily life, right? Percents everywhere. It's at the, you know, when you're going shopping, you have a certain percent discount. When you read the news, they start talking about uh, price increases, percent of this. When you look at your credit card statements or your financing, there's percents, interest rates. So you got to understand percent. And what we don't want to do in a, in a problem like this is say, well, I know I have to do something with this number and this number. So like, hmm, what could I do? Well, I could go, I can multiply these numbers. I can divide these numbers this way. Maybe I could take the 0.7 and divide it by 60. Who knows, right? What we don't want you to do is guess. We, that's not the point here. I want to uh, have you walk away from this video um, with absolute certainty on how to handle a basic percent problem, okay? So this is kind of a starting point, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help program, uh, programs out there. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that if you're interested. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, what my program is, is essentially a catalog of all my courses. So I have 100 plus math courses, have all the middle and high school math courses, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, College Algebra, is soon going to be launching pre-calculus. But I have many, many specialty courses, uh, like test preparation courses for like the GED, SAT, teacher certification exams, college placement exams, um, all those different type of things. So if you're studying for a particular type of test for uh, whatever goals that is, maybe you're going into college, maybe you're trying to get a certification, um, I likely have that uh, uh, course for you. Okay, now what I do is I research um, the requirements are, are, you know, the objectives of those tests. And I basically build like custom math courses for that. So again, if that's what you're looking to do, you can uh, check out my math help program and look to see if I have your tests. I likely do. Um, also too, if you're doing independent study, homeschooling, I have tons of courses with that. So anyways, long story short, if you need help with math, I likely can help you out. So um, let's get to another main point before we start uh, in on percent, and that is the following. If you are a student, I kind of assume that you are if you're watching this video, this concept of math notes. How important is it? Well, it's probably one of the most important, if not the most important things, thing that you can do to be successful in math. So my golden rule of math, and this is after decades of teaching the subject, is the following. Those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who uh, basically don't think it's important to take notes or feel like, I can remember everything, uh, I don't need to take notes, I have a photographic memory. Or maybe you're like, mm, you know, uh, when I go to math class, I like to do other things like check out my social media or do my homework for my other class. You get the picture. Listen, I was a student one time and I was not a perfect student, <laughs> far from it, but I made a lot of mistakes and um, paid a price for it. So if you don't take notes, you will pay a price for it. You have to work hard to take great math notes, meaning that you're going to have to be engaged, paying attention to the teacher. That's why when you look at your notes, that's evidence of your engagement. Okay. So uh, likely almost everybody out there listening to this needs, uh, there's room for improvement for your note taking. Some of you need just need to start taking uh, notes <laughs> and just start working at it. it. It is a skill, right? So don't try to be, um, you know, hold yourself to a super high standard. Just start writing things down. And as you, you get, you'll get better over time, but you got to get started on this. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Of course, uh, in my pre-algebra and algebra, actually almost all my notes, except for my geometry notes, um, you'll have notes in on percent. Okay, so let's cover 
uh, percent here. We're going to obviously go through this problem. Let's just do a more basic problem because this one's a little bit more interesting because we have the decimal point here, 0.7 percent. So, you know, I wrote this specifically for this particular video because this is kind of like mm, a little more interesting, like, hey, uh, this decimal point here, that might mess me up. But let's just do a more basic, basic problem. And just to review the procedure um, of uh, a basic percent problem. Okay, so let's do this problem. 5% of 40. Now, conceptually, what are we looking for here? Well, obviously, we're looking for 5% of 40. But really, when we're thinking about it, 40 is like the whole and 5% is the part. Okay, so, you know, conceptually, we're looking for some part of 40. Okay, that's we, we just kind of know that intuitively, right? If this percent, and that's kind of what percent is. Now, you can have things that are like 200% of 40, and that's kind of, again, a little bit more uh, interesting kind of uh, problems. But let's just stick with this. You know that your 5% of 40 represents some part of 40, some part out of this whole. So conceptually, we're going to be looking for a number that's what? Is it going to be bigger than 40? Uh, it's going to be exactly 40? Is it going to be smaller than 40? Well, if we're looking for some part of 40, we're looking for a smaller number, right? So it's going to, uh, you know, when you check your answer, this is one thing too, when you do math, if um, you have 5% of 40, and then you just got to do multiplication five times 40, <clears throat> and you get up, but you get um, 200, okay? Well, is that going to like, you know, do you any good? Is that, does that make sense to you? Okay, is that some, uh, is 5% 200? You know, that answer doesn't make sense. So you want to always be asking yourself, does this answer make sense in percent? If you have a feel for what you're looking for, then, you know, you'll be able to check your um, kind of your work. All right. So how do you handle a basic uh, problem like this? 5% of 40. Okay. So here's what you do. We have to take this percent. We can't work in percent. We have to change percent and convert it to a decimal. Okay. So this is what you need to do. You got to change your percent to a decimal. And there's basically two ways that you could do this. They obviously lead to the same result. Okay. So here's the, the first way. Okay. So the first way, I'll get to this top way here in a second, because this is my suggested way you do it. The first way is we take your percent. Okay. Whatever the case is, it's 5% right here. Uh, we take the number, the percent number that we want to convert into a decimal, and we just divide that by 100. Okay. So in this case, it's now you're not going to put the percent in on the, in your calculator. Okay. It's just going to be the number, all right, whatever this is as a decimal, you'll take that five divided by 100. And when you do that, you get 0 0.05. So that's the answer. So uh, the first approach you can take is divide your percent by 100. Okay. So to change a decimal or sorry, change a percent to a decimal, you can divide by 100. But now the result of that, okay, is basically what you're doing is you're taking the decimal point and you're moving it two places to the left. So that's your second way. So here, five, I have 5%. That is the same as 5.0%. Whoops, 5.0%. Okay, so 5% uh, is the same thing as 5.0%. Now, why did I write these two? Because if I asked you where is the decimal point here when with 5%, you know, some of you might be like, where is it at? I don't see it. <laughs> well, it's right there. We don't write it because we don't have any uh, other digits right here, but that's where it's located right here, okay? So 5%, the decimal point's located there. And what you can do when you're changing a percent to a decimal, okay, we can scoot this decimal point over two places to the left. So that would be right there. So that would be a 0 0.05. Okay, so you see that right there? So you just to move it over two places to the left. So it would be 0.5. Then you move it over one more time. That's 0 0.05. So this is uh, probably the more typical path that uh, I would say that this is the better thing to remember. But just know that it's equivalent. Okay, moving the decimal point two places to the left is the same thing as divided by 100. So however you think you remember it, okay, uh, to change a uh, percent to a decimal, okay? These are two ways. They mean the same thing, but however you remember it is really what counts. Okay, so what, you know, what does this get us? Well, here's how to find a percent of a number, all right? Step number one 
is you change the uh, percent <clears throat> to a decimal, all right? So we got that right here. We know the answer is 0 0.05, and there's two different ways to get to that answer. Then you're going to take that answer, which is 0 0.05, and you're going to multiply it by the number, okay, that you're trying to find a percent of. So in this case, that is 40. So we take 0 0.05, multiply by 40. Now, you you want to have a calculator. You don't have to have a calculator in this particular um, problem. You could, you know, write 0 0.05 as a uh, fraction. There's some other ways you can kind of approach this, but get a calculator out because we're not, you know, uh, we don't get, we don't have to get that fancy right now. Just get a calculator out. What I want you to do is just master the procedure. So 0 0.05 times 40 is 2, and that is it. 5% of 40 is 2. So we're finding some part of 40, okay, and that is 2. And that makes sense, okay? So if you understand this, then we'll be able to do our problem that um, was our kind of original problem here, okay? All right, so 0.7% of 60. So you can see that I've already kind of laid it out here, but maybe you want to finish this problem up, pause the video, and do this. I kind of uh, already have the answers kind of laid out here for a second. But what are we going to do? Well, you're going to take this percent, okay? We're going to take our percent here and write it as a decimal. So how do I do that? Well, I can move the decimal point two places to the left, or I could take that number, which is 0.7, and divide by 100. Now, uh, when I do that, I'm going to get 0 0.007, all right, or 0 0.007. Either way, so here, let's just make sure we understand that. We have 0.7 here. Let me do it right here, actually. 0.7. So I got to move that decimal point over two places to the left. So that's going to be 1, 2. All right, so that means I'm going to have to fill in uh, two zeros right there. So that's going to be 0 0.007. Okay, so you kind of kind of have to practice this. If you're a little bit confused, or like, is that 0 0.07 or 0 0.0007? Well, you got to be real careful with this. And a good way to check that you actually did that correct until you get comfortable doing it is just divide, uh, take that 0.7 divided by 100, and you should get the same answer. Okay, so that was a little bit of the twist in this problem is having that decimal point here, not 7%, 0.7. And if you really want to make it confusing, it could be like 0.007%. And that would really blow someone's mind because you'd be like, well, what do I do here? Well, you do the same thing. You're going to move that decimal point two places to the left. All right. So step number one, uh, take this uh, percent, this value, and convert it into a decimal. So 0.07% is the decimal value 0 0.007. Okay, now what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to take our decimal value 0 0.007 and multiply by 60. All right, and here we go. 0 0.007 multiplied by 60 is equal to 0 0.42. And that is it. 7% of 60 is 0 0.42. But uh, hopefully at this, you know, um, stage of the game, you can, you know, you feel pretty confident about solving basic percent problems. Basic percent problems are just finding the percent of some number, okay? But then there's other kind of, uh, you know, um, problems, more interesting percent problems you can get into, and you need to understand those as well. So you want to check out my other videos um, in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on percent because we're not done yet with the topic. But, you know, let's first get you to um, understand the basics, okay? If you can understand the basics, you can do a lot with this, all right? But, um, percent solving uh, a more interesting different type of problems yeah it gets it gets uh, more uh, involved okay and there's a couple other techniques that we need to understand but you can't do any of that until you understand this okay so if this video helped you out if you feel like you learned something please consider smashing that like button that would certainly help me out and if you're new to my YouTube channel please consider subscribing I've been on YouTube for a good 10 plus years it's an outstanding platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with uh, trying to make math clear and understandable. So I'm always teaching and I have a ton of videos, hundreds of videos, basic to advanced math on my channel. And I'm putting out new stuff all the time. But again, if you want my best uh, help, check out my, the resources in the description of this video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.